Hello. Today I'll be speaking, teaching and preaching on the work of an evangelist. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of God, I ask you, Father, to speak to the people of Deo, Father, that they know how to be an evangelist. They know how to speak, teach and preach the gospel, Father, and go out to all the world and preach the goodness of the gospel of God, that they may too bring souls into your kingdom in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty holy name. Amen and hallelujah. Amen. First, if we're going to talk about the work of evangelist, we need to know what is an evangelist. An evangelist is someone that goes out and speaks the good news of the gospel or goes out usually outside their area into other places to speak the good news of the gospel and to talk to people about Jesus and get souls saved. You may be thinking, what's the difference between an evangelist and a pastor or a preacher? A pastor usually ministers to a community of people in a local area. But the evangelist ministers to people and brings people to a pastor so that they can be ministered by the pastor. An evangelist brings people from places that aren't necessarily to have any pastors or necessarily is outside the area into Jesus, into being saved. Most people, when they are saved, it's because they heard the good news from an evangelist. When people get saved, most times it's because they heard the good news from an evangelist. Maybe it's from the pastor on a TV. Sometimes it can be. But most times it's when you're on the street, someone gives you a leaflet, talks to you, and then you get saved. Because they talk to you about this and that, about the goodness of God, and then you get saved. That's how most times it goes. That is what an evangelist does. I want us now to start off the foundation, go to 2 Timothy 4, verse 13, verse 5, sorry. Say when you're there. 2 Timothy 4, verse 5 says, But you be watchful in all things, endure affliction, do the work of evangelists and fulfill your ministry. And it also says, Yes. It says, but you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of evangelists and fulfill your ministry. Endure affliction. Timothy is telling us here to do the work of an evangelist. Many people in the Bible, especially because it was the early days of Christianity, the early days, the times when there was not many people believing in Jesus Christ compared to the two billion now, or they say two billion now. Paul was one of the greatest examples of an evangelist. He would go from place to place, on ship to ship, to city to city, preaching and speaking the goodness of the gospel and setting up churches there. They have lasted for centuries. And that becomes, this city has become a hub for Christianity and for people that want to follow in Christ's footsteps to follow. So today, let's also too follow in Jesus' footsteps. Jesus was an evangelist. He was a pastor. He was an evangelist. He was a teacher. He was a priest. He was all these different things. But Jesus was also an evangelist. The reason being, he would go out into these big crowds and speak the good news. Or he would even walk to one person and tell them the good news. Heal this person. Do that and do this and walk around to different places that are not necessarily his own. And talk to people about the good news of the gospel and give them parables and insights. That is being an evangelist. It doesn't always have to be you just uh, having to get a soul that day. But it can be giving them a leaflet and telling them about Jesus. Even if they reject you. But by telling about Jesus, you sowed the seed for them. So now let us today... To the work of evangelist. And I feel that the work of an evangelist is one of the most important works in the church. It's one of the most lacking works in the church right now. I feel that in this day and age, in this society, because there are so many Christians and we, there's so many Christians and we feel that no one wants to give up their life for God's will. And it's so interesting because the work of an evangelist, the life of someone that evangelizes to people is a life full of sacrifice it's a life full of sacrifice 
Have you heard the stories of these different people that went to different countries, to different tribes, and spoke to people about Jesus? And that tribe started to believe in Jesus, but even killed them. The people spoke about Jesus and they got killed, put in prison, tortured, but they still spoke about the Lord Jesus. Many, but many people, especially in Western society, especially in UK or the US or whatever, like big economically countries and big population countries and big ahead financial countries that are usually mostly secular like the US and the UK. We have too much luxury, right? I'm not saying luxury is a bad thing. I'm not saying that living in wealth is a bad thing because no, it's a good thing. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, but I've come to give life and have it more abundantly. Jesus wants us to have life more abundantly. What I'm saying is, is that because we have all this wealth and all this freedom, we don't want to give up our will for his will. We don't want to surrender our lives to God. We, because when we surrender our lives to God, we go wherever he tells us to go. We give up our right to do what we want to do. He paid the price and we're just giving up our right so that he can do what he wants to do within us. An evangelist gives up everything. Gives up sometimes the comfort that they're in. All those people that went to those different tribes and spoke about the good news. They gave up the comfort of their homes, of their wealth, of their sofas, of the everything that they had. They gave up the comfort of that to go and preach the good news of the gospel. And sometimes you have, might even have to give up your own life to tell the good news. But in this society today, especially in the UK or the US, because we have that luxury and that we just can't sacrifice our life or surrender our will for his will, we can't, we try and live a double life as a Christian. And I keep on talking about this. We try and live a double life as a Christian, trying to bring Christianity and the world together so we can have two cakes. So if we have two cakes. But how many know having two cakes in one session is unhealthy? Even having one cake in one session is unhealthy. But if you get what I mean, the analogy is that, that we cannot have Christianity and the world together. You cannot merge an apple with an unhealthy cake and say that's healthy. It's the same. We cannot merge Christianity and the world and live those two lives and try and merge it into one and keep that happy place because eventually there will be a time when it's either your Christianity or your worldliness, your Christian, your spirit or your flesh, and you will have to decide. You just cannot keep on living those lives, those two lives. And as an evangelist, you have to give yourself up to God. You have to give yourself up to Christ. And this is why it's so hard and so many people don't want to do it today. Because as a pastor, people... I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, but some people uh, maybe heard on stories and stuff that, oh, this pastor was do- caught doing this and that and this and that. Because as a pastor or as a preacher, sometimes, especially online, it's easy to fake. And I'm saying it's easy to fake sometimes what you believe. Even, even in the Bible, it says, even in the Bible, it says, Faith without works is dead. So you cannot show what you truly believe unless your actions show what you truly believe. If your actions don't show what you truly believe, then you're not really believing at all. Because yes, you can say with your mouth. You can say with your mouth, proclaim Jesus with your mouth. But then if your heart is far from him, ultimately, uh, to God, there's nothing there. To people it may look like it, but to God, God knows the heart. And know the thoughts and plans I have for you, says the Lord. If he has thoughts and plans for us, then he knows. If he knew us before in the womb, then he knows our hearts. We may be able to hide it from people with our pathetic fallacies of our mouths. But we cannot hide it from God. We cannot hide our words, our actions and our thoughts in our heart from God. That's why as a pastor, it's easy to fake what you preach. 
It's easy to fake. And that's why there's so many pastors getting exposed or whatever, this and that. Because it's easy to fake this, this walk with God as a pastor. Because you're just talking to someone on a Sunday, maybe doing some calls on a Tuesday on during the week. And then sinning some other days. But what I'm saying here is that their actions will ultimately show. Because as a pastor, you're just speaking. You're speaking to the people. You're speaking to them. And they may not see you. They may, you may speak to them on Sunday, but they may not see the actions on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Or whenever you don't have a service. But as an evangelist, it's your actions that speak your faith. And that is why there's barely any evangelists nowadays. Yes, there is. But com- compared to the 2 billion, or have what they say, 2 billion Christians that are nowadays, there should be way more evangelists than there are now. Way more evangelists than there are right now. Many are called, but few are chosen. This is the laborers are few. And some of these laborers are evangelists. And evangelists, there are such few laborers right now. Out of the two billion, per, they say, Christians, I would dare to say that only, not even 10%, I'll say 5% are evangelists. When the number should be much, much higher. Jesus said it himself, go out to all the world and preach the good news of the gospel. All of us can do the work. Some of us may not be skilled evangelists. We may not be, have the gift to be like Paul or to be like uh, John Wesley or to be like all these different people that went out and spoke to good news to different countries and places. We may not have the gift to be called to do that. But we have, but everyone can do the work of an evangelist. That is why I said, not an evangelist, but the work of an evangelist. Because everyone can do the work of an evangelist, but no one can do what an evangelist, no one can be called, not everyone can be called to be or do everything an evangelist does. But we can do the work, which is to go out to all the world and preach the good news of the gospel. A universal commandment that Jesus called all Christians to do is to evangelize. Some may have gifts, gifts as pastors, teachers, uh, priests, different things. But evangelists are so few nowadays because people are not willing to give up their lives, sacrifice their lives for him. No one's willing to give up their Saturday rest to go into a busy marketplace for an hour and just give out leaflets because it's too much out of my day. It's too much to give up. But yet the blood of those souls that you're meant to give will be on your hands. And God will say, where's so-and-so and and -and so-and-so that should be in heaven right now? But they're not because you didn't share with them. And now I want us to go to Ephesians 4, 11. Same moment you're there. Ephesians 4, 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For equipping the saints, for the work of the ministry, for edifying the body of Christ until we all come to the unity and faith of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness, fullness of Christ. If you see here, it says that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in cunning and craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him, who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causing the growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. That's a lot to take in. But all of those roles, the teachers, the pastors, could not be started if it was not for the evangelist. They were saved because the evangelist shared their message. So let us share our message today. But we first need to give up our lives to Jesus. We need to surrender ourselves back to the cross. His blood needs to wash us clean. Because as an evangelist, your actions will speak, not just your words. Your actions will speak louder than your words. So if you're sinning and you're saying that you're an evangelist, that you speak the good news, no one's going to get saved. Because they need to see in you, Jesus Christ. 
And the only way they can see you, see Jesus Christ in you, is if you surrender yourself to him. Jesus died on the cross for you and I. His blood what gushed out of his body and now washes his clean. A crown of thorns placed on his head, driven deep into his skull and maybe even into his brain. And now, if you feel just a touching on your heart, and you know when you feel a touching on your heart, just repeat this prayer after me. Say to me, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, I repent of my sins. Lord Jesus, forgive me now, and I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior from this day forward. In Jesus' mighty holy name, amen and holy amen. You are the one lost sheep that has now been found, the one lost coin that has now been found. Your name is written into the Lamb's book of life. Amen, amen, and amen, and hallelujah. I recommend you reading the book of John. It's such an amazing book for new born-again believers. This has been a message on the work of an evangelist. And what I want us to do, to go in tying with the message, to go in symphony with the message, I want us just to call someone, text someone today about the Lord Jesus. Someone that you know is not saved. And just text them about the Lord Jesus. If they block you, that's fine. And maybe down there, they might struck off a conversation and then bring Jesus into it. Whatever way you can evangelize, start to evangelize. Even if that loses you friends. Even if even that loses your own life. Even if you have to sacrifice everything, including your own life. He who loves his life, We'll lose it. So, let me tell you something. Even if you lose your life, even if you surrender everything up to God, and even if that means your life, give it up to Him. Give it up to Him. Give it up to God. Everything. Because he paid the price on that cross with his life. So let us return the favour. And give up our lives for the name of Jesus. This has been the work of an evangelist. Thank you for listening. And have a blessed week.